Alright everybody, we're going to start this episode by fixing the last episode. Before we do that, I need to show you this code here. Um, the punch code I've changed a little bit. So when you hit the right mouse button, it's going to check for these. If you press the left button, it's going to punch, set that trigger. I separated these into a get bool to check if it were sneaking. If we're not, then set it. I did this because if you remember it kept firing and firing and I think that was part of the problem. Otherwise you just set it to false. So I'll give you a second to copy that. And then uh, we'll come back here and I'll show you how to fix this. So we're going to delete the punch animation. Oh, let's make this a little bigger. I can't see very well. Alright. So the punch animation's got to go in here. And then we're going to add a new layer. This is what I was talking about in that last uh, text that was glitching out. So we'll call it combat. And we're going to set its weight to 1 because we want it to override this layer and this layer. Then we're going to go over to our folders and assets, animation. You're going to want to grab your punch and drag it in there. Oops. Uh, right click, create state empty. And then right click, set as a default because we don't want it to just start punching. Then from your any state, make a transition with right click to your punch. And we're just going to do this when punch, just like before, nothing different. And what will hopefully happen now is the punch will override this. We can test that out. There we go. You can punch as much as you want. Looks a little goofy, but hey, it works. All right. Ah, and see this? It's not coming back out, and that's because it's stuck in this layer. So we got to fix that too. Simple. Let's find the exit way over here. And we just want to have it leave this when it's done. So with exit time, it's just going to get out of there. Try that again. There we go. And it, it does this little see that little where it puts his arms in that's because it's going back to the default which is here it's down here oh those don't need to be in there delete those out there we go at least works now you see you can punch as much as you want let go should work while walking around too. All right, so today's episode, let's talk guns. All right, I'm gonna start with the animation and I'm going to select my player rig. Let's bring this up and we are going to Create a new clip. We're gonna name it hole. And it's just gonna take finally figured out how to do this right. Um we want sprites, player, and torso interact. It's right here. We're gonna change our torso to this. So all you gotta do is click torso. Oh, it's not recording. There we go. Torso interact. Boom. It makes it happen. This is not gonna loop. Oh, we don't want. What am I doing? We want hold. There we go. Hold. All right. That's it. That's the animation. 
So if we go back to animation, we have our new hold, and we can take that loop away. It's not going to loop, just going to be solitary. Um, upper body. We're going to make a new state. No, we're not. We're going to drag our hold in here. And it's also going to make transition to hold. We're going to need new parameters. And we're going to make one called bool is holding and when is holding is true so it's true we're going to go to it all right and then when it's not true it's just going to go back to exit so Now we go to our code and check if it has a gun. So how do we do that? Well, we come up here and we're going to make a new it's going to be an int uh, weapon type. Alright, it's going to be zero. Well, let's do that in game. Alright, you start. Yeah, you start with weapon type equals zero. Alright, and down here, when we do the right mouse button, first thing we're going to do is check if, no, 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 let's do switches, switch, weapon type, alright. Case zero. We're going to do this. So you can control X, control V. Alright. Then break. Zero is going to be uh, no weapons. So we can comment that in here. No weapon. Alright. And then, for now, we have case. Well, let's put them in. Let's do case one. Whoops. This one is going to be melee weapon. And we won't have one for now, so break. Case two. It's going to be pistol break. Case three. It's going to be a rifle. And break case four. It's going to be. I don't know, like a bazooka or an RPG or something. We'll call it heavy. And break. 
So, we're about to make the pistol. So if there's a pistol, we're just going to copy this up here. Control C, Control V, and if is holding is false, I'm going to make is holding to true. Simple as that. Alright, and just real quick, make sure this is public int weapon type, because we just want to see it in the inspector. Back to Unity here, now we should be able to see our weapon type. So, we're going we're gonna to use the the numpad I think change our weapons it's gonna do mouse scroll wheel but I can't get it to work so we're gonna do I think the numpad to change our weapons because I can't get the scroll wheel to work for some reason um a little annoying but Let's do this. So, I'm going to say if input.get key down. So, I'm going to say key code dot numlock. Uh, oh, what is it? Alpha seven F key joystick. No keypad. Okay, that's what they call it. I say keypad plus. What if you don't have a keypad though? Anyway, just for now, keypad plus. It's just things you gotta think about when you're making a game though. What if they don't have one? You know what? What if they don't? So we're just gonna use uh, alpha. What do we want to say? Plus. Is that a thing? Just a plus and minus on the keyboard. Actually, Z. Z and C might be cool for this. Key code C. I see you can make it whatever you want guys we're just simply gonna say weapon type plus plus I'm also gonna add an it well let's just copy that same thing right here copy paste we're gonna do Z and we're gonna change this to minus minus Alright. Now let's see what happens. If we press play you should see over here on our weapon type. Switch it manually like this. 
So if it's two, I think we put pistol. See how he holds it. Now what you want to do from there. Oh, we never made it exit. Here we did. Here we did. No, we didn't. Okay. So down here at the bottom, else we gotta set all our bulls to false. So we can just do this one right here. Well, let's just type it out. M dot set bool. Oh, I thought that would auto complete for me. Let's set bool. is holding false so and I look play on again I always do this turn it off back on punch like crazy people pop 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 all right but if we do C on over to two he holds what do you think? I'm pretty sure this works. Oh, you can't switch while you do this. You gotta switch then. I mean, that kind of makes sense. And don't at the same time. But either way, I'll show you what we do from here. So, for now, we're going to make. Right renderer. Gonna make this the hold. Like that. Just so we can get in here. And we're gonna put a little uh a to the object. Now an empty. We're gonna drag that out to where his hands are, about there. Yeah, about there. We're gonna call this one weapon. Eh, let's do weapon spawn. This is where his gun is gonna come out. All right. To make a gun, um, let's make another sprite. To the object sprite. And we'll just use yeah, input field background. Alright. Maybe we'll scale it this way and scale it this way. Kind of a big gun. You don't play around. We'll move it a little bit forward. Actually, it's always going to spawn here, so we got to do a double again. We got to do great empty. Then put this in here. There we go. So, this is the gun sprite. This is the gun. Which goes on the weapon spawn. Hopefully it makes a little more sense now. This sprite is going to need to be in the foreground. I'm also going to color it. Uh, wait, wait, that's not what I want. Oh, gray's alright. I want a little darker. Let's do like a, that. All right. And then what you'll do is over here, 
he'll disable this if he doesn't have a gun like let's say he has I don't know he's holding a present or something he would just disable that and enable the present you know what I mean I'll have examples of that later for now I'm gonna leave that on actually that's gonna stay when this is gone isn't it okay so we'll have to disable this gun sprite which means we need a reference to it easy enough um, Go up here, like a reference to our sprite. We'll call it. Actually, it's a game object. It's a game object. Gun. For now, I mean, you'd you'd have an array of all these objects or a list. Should we just do that? Eh, for now. Game object gun. And then. Make it public so we can just drop it in in the inspector. And change it to pistol. All right. Now we can disable it down here, and we uh, set pistol dot enable. Oh, active. Whoops. It's changed. Pistol dot active equals false. I think. Oh, okay. That's obsolete. So set active. And then set active is a function, so you have to do the uh, parentheses. False. So if I could spell false. Like that. Actually, you'd, <laughs> you'd want it true because we're we're going to gun true. Otherwise, um, pistol dot set active is false. That makes sense to you guys. All right. I'll hop back. See if it works. And we'll start it with off because you wouldn't run around with a gun at the start of the game. And then we'll change his torso back to idle. Start the game. It's mad because we never set a pistol in the script. So we need to do that here. It's just a game object, the gun. You don't want the sprite, the sprite's just a child. It does whatever gun does. Let's play. And um, still running around a punch. Change the thing to two. And have a pistol out. Now that happens a lot quicker than the animation, unfortunately.
we can fix that um, by actually making it part of the animation you would just make a trigger it turns that on when it gets to that part but you see what I mean and if it's zero then he doesn't get the gun out doesn't get the gun out You could also put it in a uh, I enumerator and just have it wait a second or 0.5 seconds, whatever lines up and looks good. But uh, for now, it's it's all right. So what I want to do next is make it so it shoots. How do we do that? Well, we already know that if we do the right, we need to do the same thing here. We'll do it after because we'll do the animation then. We will not punch. Matter of fact, it's not an animation at all. If we click the left button and it's two, then it's actually gonna do ray cast hit 2D. We're gonna call it hit. Physics dot raycast from our transform position mm, transform dot. I think it's forward, it might be right. This one up forward. We're going to say you can shoot 10 units away. Physics 2D. There we go. Um, so we're going to do the raycast. There, well, let's comment that. Fire a ray from the player outward. And you could do it from uh, the gun. Since we do have that pistol, you know, you could say pistol dot transform position, and that would work fine too. And so it might be right because I think forward. Let's try right. I think it's right on two D. Right. All right. Um, from the player outward. Ten units. You know, or whatever this number is, that's how far it'll go. Then you would say if hit is not equal to null. So if it hits something. hit collider is not equal to null so we get some kind of collider out there so it's null, it's not null and it hits something we want to know what that is so game object geo uh, it's going to be equals hit dot Collider dot game object. Alright. We're going to 
gonna store that. Well, if it's a switch, go dot tag. All right. If it's a case enemy, you hit an enemy. First, we're gonna set that to our active enemy. So let's do active enemy equals geo. We have to make that uh, variable here in a minute. And then you would do something like say deal damage. And you make a function for that. So let's test this out. Let's go up here. And this is so unorganized. We're gonna make a public for now, just so we can see it. Game object active enemy. Alright, so we can set that. And it doesn't have a break, so it's gonna be mad. Break. And deal damage. Well, we might as well set that up. So we'll go down somewhere nice and there we go. Void deal damage. And it's just gonna be a simple function of active enemy. get component so if you do active enemy dot get component so we want a script uh enemy or let's call it a it's probably gonna be called the AI controller you'd already have your AI made by this point AI Control. Okay. We're going to call this AI control. Name it. Enemy script equals. So we're going to make it here. Enemy script equals the active enemy. Get his script. And then we're going to say enemy script dot uh, health or HP, whatever you name it, is going to be minus equals to R. Pistol damage. Well, just damage, because once you go into pistol, you would change that. So, minus equal. No. Damage. Ah, so we got to make damage or it's not going to be happy. So, here at the top, we're going to do a public so we can set it ourselves. Int damage. Alright. And right here, if you get out the pistol, we're going to say damage equals one hundred. All right, for now, it's just going to up and kill him instantly. So, that's going to be minus equal damage. Now we need to make the enemy AI control script. So that's we're just gonna do that simple too. Don't save this, just hop back into Unity real quick. We're gonna take this player and we're gonna do control D. We're gonna rename him to enemy. 
we're going to change his tag, add tag to enemy. Go back out, change his tag to enemy. So we're going to move him, flip him. It's the X. No, well, it must be Z for 2D. There we go. And then we'll hop back in our. S well, first we need to take player control out. And scripts. We're going to make a brand new one. Add component. AI control. Important that you name this the same as in here. Whatever you name this, make this. There you go. Add component. New script. AI control. Create and add. Alright. We know that. Where did you put it? AI control, drag it in the scripts folder. Hop in there. Just for now, we're gonna have he has an int called health. And it's gonna have to be public because we want to be able to access it from our other script public health and he's simply going to have a function that says if health is less than or equal to zero because sometimes when it does its math so it'll say you know he has negative 25 health so you don't want to just say zero. So if it's less than or negative to or equal to zero, then we're gonna destroy uh, this dot game object. Let's test that out. Back to Unity. And then he'll instantly die if we don't give him some health. So down here in health, put him at, for now, 200. It's going to take two shots to get him. All right. And then just come out here. And if we walk up to him and pop we're gonna walk right through. He has no collider. Enemy sprite render. Yeah, he has no collider. So hold on a second. No collider to hit. So we're just gonna say box collider 2D. Is that what we want a box? Circle collider. Do a circle collider. And then we'll shrink that radius. There we go. Let's try that again. Um, got our gun. Pop. Maybe it's too far away. I'm guessing it's because one of them don't have a rigid body. Let's test it. Let's give our character a rigid body. 2D. We're going to make it... Uh, kinematic. We don't want it to do anything. We're not running off physics. We will with the cars, but not with the player. Oh. Wow. Still 
still can't run into him. You can see that when our damage is a hundred now, so that part works. But can we shoot him? Yes, we can. Now it works. All right. So what you do is you trigger a uh, animation at that point in time. All right. Unfortunately, that's all I have time to show you guys this weekend, but uh, we'll pick it up next weekend with maybe another weapon type or, I don't know, I'll think of something fun. Maybe we'll just move on to cars and come back to weapons later now that we know basically how they work. I want to thank you guys again for watching and uh, hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, Hopefully you got some kind of cool game ideas forming in your head, because this is going to be fun. Um, I can't wait to get to the city building myself, make up a little town, drive around, but we'll get there. I just want to say thanks again for everybody watching, and see you next time. Take it easy.